Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm super excited because this is a DVO JDX cold shock. It's been designed specifically for trail bikes and I've never ridden a cold shock before on a trail bike. So I'm gonna take it to Whistler. I'm gonna do some laps on this shock, also on my Topaz Air Shock to figure out which one works best for me and why I like one shock over the other one. It's gonna be super cool, so stay tuned. Oh, by the way, if you want a steady rack, I have a code, it's called REMI10 and you'll get a 10% discount. First, I'm gonna take my trail bike to Vorsprung for uh, some suspension service. Thanks Steve, so just if we can do uh, a regular service on the fork and on the shock and just makes the fork like slightly more progressive so yep. maybe like 5 10 cc of oil on the on the left uh, fork and uh... yeah for sure awesome thank you get that sorted cheers man hey guys we made it to whistler as you can see this bike is slightly different than the one i use for trail previews it's a cube steel 170 so same frame same sizing uh, same fork same wheel same tire same cockpit only difference is basically the transmission this is a bike park setup so I just have a Dunning transmission and I don't have my hydraulic seat post but everything else is the same so I know my settings, I know my position, I'm comfortable with it. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm gonna head to the bike park, pick up a trail that has a bit of everything and the only thing I'm gonna change during this day is gonna be the shock. I'm gonna do air versus coil and so that way I can accurately uh, test both and give you my honest feedback on what I prefer. Even though I'm sponsored by DVO suspension, DVO hasn't asked me to use one shock over another. I can run any of the two. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna let you know exactly what I think. But first, let's check the bike. We're gonna do tire pressure and then we go and ride. So here we go. I've chosen a 450 pound spring to start. Uh, on the parking that feels really good that really matches the setup I have on my onyx fork So yeah, I think it's gonna be really good. I might have to go to a 500 pound spring uh, If I experience too many bottom out But yeah, I think it's gonna be a really good start. Everything look good. So I'm gonna head up to the mountain I'm gonna start riding and uh, I'm gonna focus on you know making sure my lines are still good from last year and Once I'm comfortable with the riding I'll really focus on the settings, understanding what I like, what maybe I don't like about the shock, go back to the air so I can really compare on the same trail, exact same conditions, and, uh, and yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, we are on top of Lower Whistler. I got my DVO JDX with a 450 spring. So we're gonna start by Fantastic, then I'm gonna make my way to Whistler Downhill. Um, Clown Shoes, Afternoon Delight, Detroit Rock City, and then I'm gonna do a bit of uh, lower airline, so it's a tech part and then some jumps. So I think it's a really good lap, because there is a bit of everything. There's some super fast section, some big impact, some chandery stuff, some rock faces, some off camber, some burns, even some jumps. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a good track to uh, test a bit the overall of uh, the feel I have with, uh, with this shock. Okay, so first lap with the JDX. Oh, the dirt is nice. So yeah, it's pretty fast, super chandery. Up into the berm, jump. Oh, I'm actually uh, impressed. The bike is super playful, but still, still super predictable. That's really nice. Huh. I thought I would uh, sit a bit more on the travel. I'm gonna stick to the inside here. 
I was not the shark, that was me. Oh wow! When I brake, the bike really stays glued to the ground more than with the air shock. Super fun! Yeah, the bike is really silent with that. Oh wow! And so fun! Wow! Super impressed! I think uh, I think the 450 spring is actually really good. I thought it would be too soft, but there's a couple of big compression on the trail, and I had actually way more support than I thought. I normally like the air shock because you can make it super progressive and get really good support on the bigger hits. But so far the spring has been unreal. Matches really nice the front. Obviously on the trendery stuff, and that's why people like the spring because super reactive and you get like a really good feel, more traction. And uh, yeah, I could tell like compared to the air shock, the spring was really sticking to the ground. So super positive feedback so far. Okay, let's keep on rolling. So many little shredders. That one's pretty tricky for them, is it? And older shredders too. Okay, afternoon delight now. Yeah, the bike is still super fun. Grip is really good. Oh, it's really comfortable. Wow. Oh, the traction. Traction was really good on that. Okay, we're gonna do some tech and then some jumps. So I love it on tech. So here there's lots of looking. Yeah. I missed mean, that corner a bit, but the shock really ended it super nice. Alright, now the jump. Yeah, shot can scrub a bit. Nice. Yeah, it doesn't sit too much on the travel. I really like that. Oh, cool. Okay, so that first lap to me was a success. I'm super happy with how the shock performed, especially on the first lap. Definitely that parking test I've done before uh, to give me you know, a good idea of having the rear of the bike and the front matching was pretty good. Uh, yeah, I could not be any happier. So I'm just gonna make a couple of adjustments. I'm gonna put some tension on the spring. So just about half a turn. So the bike is gonna sit a little bit higher. Uh, and also, I'm gonna slow down the rebound just by two clicks. So one, two. Okay. 
I'm gonna try that and uh, then we'll go for the air shock and compare I feel like my, my speed on the trail is good and I'm gonna not gonna try to go any faster I'm really gonna try to focus on the bike and uh, it's the same line and uh, so I can uh, compare uh, accurately okay another lap on the test track Yeah, actually feels pretty good. Slowing down the rebound makes the bike sticking to the ground a little bit more. Yeah, definitely uh, pretty good. Yeah, the bike is more predictable. Yeah, I felt really good with those adjustments. Pulling half a turn uh, of preload definitely gave a tiny, tiny bit more support. Uh, I felt the bike didn't sink as much because I don't really have low speed or high speed compression on, on that shock. On this reservoir, I maxed out in terms of PSI already for support and, and kind of like the bottom end of the shock, which was good. What I'm gonna do though, is that I'm gonna speed up the rebound one click. So, I slow it on two click, now I open it up uh, one click just because slower rebound made the bike feel safer, more predictable uh, but not as fun and also I didn't have as much traction and comfort on the chandelier stuff so if the shock goes back up faster then that gives me a little bit more uh, contact with the ground so I think it's gonna be good and that keeps the bike a bit more playful so let's try that second part of our track oh yeah yeah the bike doesn't sit as much and having a, a rebound a bit faster it comes back to the initial position a bit faster oh <laughs> A bit low pressure for the bike park. Oh, I'm sorry. You good? Sorry about that. No you good? We got a bit of traffic, so I'm gonna head back a little bit just so I can come into Detroit City with, with some speed. Okay, at the cross right there, we got a bit of traffic, so I came back up just so I can really uh, try this section because it's pretty crucial. A lot of uh, like a pretty good braking section. Oh wow, the bike is really planted here. Oh yeah. Oh man, the traction is sick. Oh yeah. Let's boost it. Oh wow. I thought I'd bottom out. I didn't.
bike is way more progressive than I thought. Start. Okay guys, so I'm back from my laps with a cold shock. Uh, it's been really good. So now I'm looking forward to uh, mount back uh, the Topaz, which is the air shock and see how I feel. I'm gonna ride same trail, same speed, same lines. And so I can have really an accurate comparison of the two. Obviously that's a short term review. Uh, so it doesn't mean that, you know, I'm gonna stick to one shock or the other for, for the rest of my life. Uh, but it just means that on this track that has, you know, quite a lot of different features and different terrain, uh, one shock is gonna perform for me and for my bike better than the other. So let's see that. Okay, before anything, I'm gonna double check the bike, make sure nothing's loose, that the tire pressure is still good because I hit a rock pretty good. Yeah, the tires and uh, wheel combo from E13 has been amazing. I, uh, I have a discount code for you if you need. Remy 20 that will give you a 20% discount on the website so that's pretty good also STFU use code Remy 15 so you can keep your chain super quiet really works well and uh, what do I have oh yeah Murdoger Remy 20 and uh, yeah I think that's it gonna hold the chain if you ride a lot you want to be doing that I mean in the bike park ideally you do it you know twice a day And now let's change the shock. Okay, what I really like about that frame is that Michael, the engineer, has designed it so it works with air shock and with cold shock. So, a few frames are like this. And the reason why is because there's different points to position your shock, and that will respect the same geometry that will just give a different ratio and a different leverage to the rear wheel to uh, impact on the shock. And so that way uh, you can have um, a setup that's been designed specifically for coil and a setup specifically designed for airshock. So on the back and on top for coil and um, for the airshock it's a control. So let's switch that and put the DV Auto Pass on. Perfect. Okay, looking forward to do a lap this time on the Topaz. I'm super used to the air shock on this bike. I know how it feels. It's a setup like I'm normally riding. So looking forward to see the difference after riding the JDX. Thank you. Have a good day. So here we go. Oh, nice. So here it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, really, uh, it's a bit different. Definitely good. I kind of have more feeling uh, with the spring than with the air shock. Yeah, you know what, on this section. Thank you guys. On this section, I felt like the air shock was a bit more bouncy. So here it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, you know what? I'm surprised actually. The air shock is doing really good, but I feel I have a better feeling with the terrain, with the spring. Hey bear. <laughs> well, I can't reset, I was not expecting it because that's Whistler. Okay, now this section is important. Coming in slow. 
Yeah, you know what? That air shock is really good. Ah. My rebound maybe was a bit slow and the shock didn't have time to go back to the initial position. Yeah, on that corner, I felt like my uh, rear wheel with the coil has a little bit more traction. Awesome. Okay. Well, this is a setup I'm used to ride. So it felt different. Uh, the progressivity, like this truck is a bit more progressive uh, with that setup. Also because I have four volume spacer on the positive chamber. And so the bike sits a little bit more on the travel. So maybe that makes the bike not as playful, but then it wrap ups nicely. Um, I felt like, especially when I was braking and going really hard with my weight on the bike, to really try to slow down, uh, the bike was not as comfortable as uh, the spring and on that like little like chandery or like gravelly stuff I felt like the, the coil tracks a bit better um, Yeah, so let's keep on going and see uh, So yeah, let's keep <clears throat> So yeah, let's keep on going to uh, the second part of our little test track and see how that works on those other features I quite like how the bike sits. Yeah, for example, on that corner, the bike sits a little bit lower because setup is a bit more progressive. Yeah, you know what? That Topaz works, uh, Topaz, yeah, sorry, Topaz works really good as well. Ah oh, man, that's gonna be a tough call. Okay, so. I'm gonna make my way to a line tech. A line's on five. So first jump. Yeah, the bike is still very responsive with that air shock. Yeah, you know what? I didn't feel as much in control on that section with the air shock. So I'm gonna pop now to see on the big impact. Yeah, feels good. Up, it's a whip. Last jump. And here we are. Oh, good day. Well, it's gonna be a tough call, really. So I'm back at home. Uh, since the session in the bike park, I actually spent about a week on the JDX coil shock uh, on my trail bike in Squamish on the trails I'm really familiar with. And because I wanted to ride some of the steeper, gnarlier line and do some of the gaps I normally do with this shock to really be able uh, to test the shock in as many situations as possible. So I've redone some super loose terrain, uh, some wet routes, a bit of everything. And I think I prefer the JDX. Why? Because I just have a better feedback uh, from the terrain uh, with that shock. Uh, I feel like the suspension gives me more information and I can adapt my riding and I you know, can make basically better choices than when I ride with the air shock. 
Uh, interesting thing as well, I ended up spinning up uh, my rebound compared to uh, the air shock. I don't know why, I just felt better with a bit more rebound. Uh, I felt like the bike was still very, um, you know, predictable, uh, which is something really important for the kind of riding I do. Uh, and I was getting like maybe a bit more fun, more traction. Uh, so yeah, it was really interesting. One thing to consider though is that this bike, as, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, position specially designed for cold shock. Um, so the feedback I experience with the shock might be slightly different from the one you might experience with uh, your own shock. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, one thing I'd like to mention, obviously I was testing in the bike park, so pedaling was not something important, but the lock on the JDX works extremely well. You basically get uh, basically no sag, suspension basically does not move. What that does, that makes your uh, C-tube angle steeper also. When the C-tube angle is steeper, your position is better to pedal uphill. Um, so that was definitely something really interesting and that made more of a difference than on my air shock. So I really enjoyed it. Obviously the air shock is more easily uh, tunable. You know, you can just add some air uh, while you're on the side of the trail and so you can adapt, which you can't really do uh, on a cold shock, even though you can tie a little bit the spring, but that's about it. And obviously an air shock is lighter. So if weight is something important for you, keep that in mind when purchasing a new shock. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to a ton of fun uh, to make it. Make sure you like it. Leave me a comment with you know any question you would have. And if you want to support my channel, check out the links in the description. There is a link to Jensen USA. Jensen USA is a huge retailer and you can purchase you know DVO, KMC, Rotor, E13, Ergon, uh, one up all of those brands that I'm riding, Time Pedals as well. And uh, they've been a huge support of my channel. And so when you click on that link and then make a purchase, you help me to make more and better video. And I really appreciate that. Check out also the link in the description for uh, some discount codes on some of the products I ride. And I hope to see you soon on YouTube on the trail. Thank you.